Hi, my name is Katya Sharp, and I'm running for state representative in Somerville's 27th Middlesex District. Uh, I'm running because I learned early on um, that I would like to put people first and address the root causes of problems from some gaps in the safety net that I saw in childhood and in my work. Uh, when I was younger, I actually, my parents went through a medical bankruptcy. My father had a serious life-threatening accident uh, and they, he was rushed to the hospital and they had $200,000 worth of medical debt. And uh, we were uninsured at the time because this happened before the ACA um, banned um, you know, insurance companies from prohibiting people from getting insurance for lots of different reasons. So we, my parents discharged that medical debt through bankruptcy and I watched as my parents rebuilt their financial life after that. My mother raised two children while taking care of my father who was in a halo brace at the time and also running our small business. And from there, I really saw both strong female leadership as well as what the gaps in the safety net can do to a family and the fact that those gaps in the safety net affect every single one of us um, and, and really can come up at you at any time. Since then, I actually have also dealt with um, further significant challenges in the healthcare system uh, when dealing with the needs of a loved one who had a serious mental illness. Um, and we couldn't find, we had struggled to find the care that that person needed. So the, the barriers in access to primary and preventive care, I have actually watched as those barriers turn into years of untreated mental health conditions. Uh, and, and that can really lead to, for example, the involvement of police um, when a mental health condition becomes a serious, serious enough challenge to call 911 um, because a person is at risk. And so in my, in my work, I've actually sought to address those challenges. I started out in the governor's budget office under Deval Patrick. I was working on creating, um, you know, creating housing for chronically homeless adults through the Housing First Permanent Supportive Housing Model. Um, there we actually created enough housing to serve half of the chronically homeless adults in the state. I also created a program to provide vocationally oriented English language learning to non-native speakers to help them get better jobs and, and better employment. And I also worked on a program to serve 929 young men who had been incarcerated or on probation um, to provide them with life skills, education, and uh, vocationally oriented training um, to help them get jobs and interrupt that cycle of incarceration. Lastly, in the governor's budget office, Another thing that I really got to understand was our tax code and how we can actually raise revenue to pay for some of these critical investments by making the tax code progressive instead of regressive and what it actually takes to get there. So right now I'm actually working on creating mental health and substance use programs that would prevent unnecessary arrest or hospitalization of people with those conditions. And for the last five years, I've really been investigating how do you prevent people from interacting with police in negative ways and reduce the violence of those encounters if they do happen. Some of the things I've learned from that are that somewhere between 60 and 80% of, um, of the 911 calls that come in are actually social service needs and not crime. And, and police departments that we've worked with have, have said we want social workers to go out on those calls because the social workers actually know how to handle those situations much better than police actually do. So that's kind of why I'm running. I'm running because the root causes of problems are about the holes in our social safety net and the gaps in these big systems where they, uh, in between these big systems, really. So, you know, I think really big issues that face Somerville that I'd like to tackle include affordable housing. You know, we've had um, a, a renaissance in Somerville. We've also been part of a region-wide housing crunch, where we're the second most expensive uh, housing market in the country. And, you know, what that does is for renters like me, it becomes even more, more difficult to afford a place to live. Um, and I've seen the consequences of that in my, my work to um, end the, the practice of people being unhoused. So what I'd like to do is address the root cause of that problem at the State House by creating much, much more housing in the entire region, not just in Somerville, to address that problem. 
I'd also like to, in the short term, help people who are struggling to, to maintain their housing, especially when we when we end this eviction moratorium eventually um, because of the COVID crisis. I'd also like to address the climate crisis, which I think is related to housing. Um, you know, there, there are really three tenets to addressing the climate crisis. First, it's getting to net zero carbon emissions as a state and ideally as a, as a country, although um, my role will be mostly at the state level. Um, but it's also about resiliency. So, you know, projects where um, we can actually make sure that our city is responding to um, inevitable effects of, of the climate change that will be happening. Um, in Somerville, what that means is investing in sewer projects to prevent um, pollution into the Mystic River. And then lastly, to do all of those things in a way that's taking into account environmental justice, making sure that communities of color and low-income communities are not the sites of all of our polluting infrastructure, and that we uh, account for them when, when and if prices rise, for example, um, when our electric grid, grid goes uh, net, carbon, net carbon zero. I'd also like to address funding transportation. This has been something that we have been talking about but haven't done for the last 30 years. Uh, you know, it's really about investing in addressing the backlog of deferred maintenance as well as upgrades to transportation to make it more safe, reliable, and also more green. I also would like to see investments in addition to in our, in our bus system to make it more equitable and in our subway system to make it more reliable. I would like to see investments in bike lane, protected bike lanes and in improving pedestrian infrastructure, especially in a city like Somerville that can be so walkable and bikeable. And finally, I'd like to address education. One of the biggest investments that we can make in education is in universal pre-K. Pre-K has been, has been shown through data and evidence, which is one of my, the things that I like to read, um, to actually improve not only educational outcomes for children in school, but to improve later in life outcomes across a range of issues from, you know, uh, reduced incarceration rates to improved home ownership and car ownership rates to better jobs. So I'd like to see an investment in universal pre-K. Um, and I'd also like to see, from an equity perspective, investments in special education and English language learning in our school system as well. So I'm running because all of these things really add up to how do our systems work together to support people rather than allowing people to fall through those cracks, like my family um, did and had to pull itself back out of that crack um, when I was growing up. Um, so please consider um, voting for me on September 1st. Check out sharpforsummerville.com as well to read more about my candidacy.